Hello, my name is Imogen Stafford and I'm a research assistant at the University of Southampton and I'm going to talk about using random survival forest for the stratification of Crohn's disease patients by stricturing endotype. So firstly, what is Crohn's disease? Well, it's a subtype of the complex autoimmune condition inflammatory bowel disease and both genetics and environmental factors can contribute to its development. Uh, because of the complex nature of this disease, um, predicting a patient's disease course can be challenging. And additionally, Crohn's disease has some specific endotypes associated with it, such as a stricturing endotype, which involves the narrowing of a section of gastrointestinal tract. And this can sometimes require surgery. So what we set out to do was to see if we could stratify patients based on their stricturing endotype using whole exome sequencing data. Now, because patients can develop this endotype at any point in their disease course, we wanted to incorporate a survival element into our machine learning modeling. And so we used random survival forest. And as such, we also used timed stricturing endotype data. One of the processing steps we employed for whole exome sequencing data was the use of Genepi scores which condenses all the mutation level information in each gene into a singular score. So for each variant, the score incorporates zygosity, um, the allele frequency and the predicted pathogenicity and sums every, all the information on each variant together. And afterwards, we have a patient by gene score matrix, which is more suitable input for machine learning than variant level information. This is the machine learning pipeline that we used. And one step to highlight here is feature selection because we actually had two methods that we trialed um, for this. The first being um, feature ranking by generating individual Cox proportional hazards models for each gene and then selecting the top discriminant genes um, using an elbow method, which were then input into the random survival forest. And the other method that we tried here was instead of doing a feature selection process, we used dimensionality reduction with principal component analysis. So the results that we achieved, um, the best results we could get were using the PCA method as opposed to the Cox proportional hazards modeling. And additionally, we did try several gene panels prior to feature selection, including an IBD gene panel, um, an autoimmune gene panel. But at the end of the day, our best result was using a smaller, not signaling gene pathway panel. So um, this is an innate immune system pathway, which is already known to be um, a factor in the development of Crohn's disease. We got a C index on the training data of 0 0.77 and on the testing data of 5.8. And we also have the area under the curve over the years of follow up here, where you can see the average AUC on the testing data is 0 0.54. We also looked at the feature weights. And in general, the weight of each principal component is quite small. Um, but in terms of these, um, the largest positive weight and the largest negative weight, we can look at the genes that contribute to the positive and negative loadings in these principal components. And it's important to highlight here um, the negative loading of NOD2 um, in principal component 33. And NOD2 is already known as um, a strong genetic risk factor in the Crohn's disease, development of the Crohn's disease subtype. So um, we also see it popping up here in the development of the stricturing endotype. So in conclusion, um, there is promise in using this type of data to stratify patients, but the sparsity of the genomic data did prove to be a real challenge even after condensing the information into this gene level score. Um, and it's for this reason that we think that using PCA um, improved the results because it maximized 
the variance in each feature that was used in the random survival forest. Um, and the results have suggested that even though we focused on a specific enzotype, rather than looking at the two subtypes of IBD, which are Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, um, they're narrowing down onto this um, smaller, more specific group. Um, there is still significant genetic heterogeneity behind the development of the strict drink endotype. So we could potentially stratify patients better um, if we had a larger data set where the machine learning can better associate these different genomic signals with the strict ring type. Thank you for listening.